infernal greetings, infernal blessings to all. Some quick updates. We have a live class this evening at 8 p.m. on YouTube. Left-hand path thoughts and musings, or musings and thoughts on the left-hand path, where myself and Demetrius Clark will be discussing different concepts, philosophies, practices, so on and so forth on the left-hand path. For example, one of the things we'll go over is the mindset of a vampire. Another thing we'll go over is the sleeping dragon. How to wake up the sleeping dragon. We feel it's essential that we do these live classes so that people get a greater understanding of what the left-hand path is truly all about. Right now, you have a lot of misunderstandings because of so many people coming from the right-hand path or the gray or right-hand occult world into the left-hand path, and they're bringing those concepts and philosophies into here and meshing and mixing the two. The problem that happens when you create this hodgepodge between the two is you become a gray sider. Basically, you don't take a stand. You don't take a stand on what side you stand on and what concepts and philosophies and practices best would benefit you. This is happening a lot more than I've seen in years to walk in this left-hand path, going through this left-hand path, being initiated in this left-hand path. There's a lot of things that are not truly left-hand path, but are being passed off as it is, and it's not the case. We have to understand that left-hand path in its very nature is of the feminine. But don't mix the feminine energy with just physical gender. You have feminine and masculine energy in this world, in this solar system, in this galaxy, in this universe, so on and so forth. The feminine energy is the receptive energy. It receives, it takes in. And the active, the masculine is the active energy. It is that which pushes along or pushes things forward. The masculine is the conscious and the feminine is the energy. When we understand these concepts, we understand them beyond physical gender that is unfortunately and can be limiting in us having less understanding. Therefore, when you understand the left-hand path as a feminine energy, it is the ability, whether you're male or female in the physical gender, to receive, to be able to receive within yourself and process the information, let it synthesize with your body, let it synthesize with your chakras, awaken the kundalini, the feminine energy then rises by way of the sleeping serpent and merges with the awaiting crown chakra where Shiva awaits with the supreme consciousness. The energy in the supreme consciousness merged to become one within self. So we're getting a misunderstanding that the left-hand path or the right-hand path or this patriarchal, matriarchal, we're getting confused with physical concepts, physical events, and limiting what the potential of the left-hand path really holds. There is no one way that is done right and one is done wrong. To a vampire, there is no right or wrong. There is no right or wrong. Let me repeat that again. But unfortunately, people are taking these concepts and utilizing it because they have hurt egos, hurt fragile trauma inside of themselves to be man haters or woman haters. 
And that's not what the purpose of this path is about. The purpose of this path is to understand the masculine and feminine within the self to then merge it into one and not be caught up under the same limiting concepts, same limiting ideas that society pushes forth and binds us to the slave and herd mentality. We have to get away from that in order for us to really elevate, transform, and become awakened beyond this so-called woke culture, woke mentality, which is false in its very nature. Its concepts are diluted and fragile, but we have to understand we need to become the master over self. To do that, you must know and understand the masculine and feminine. You cannot be one-sided, but unfortunately, I see many females come onto the left-hand path, and they're very one-sided, and they start using this attack on masculinity because they feel they've, they've been empowered by the dark feminine, and you're missing the point. You're missing the point. The point is you should be mastering the masculine and feminine within and not attacking without. Therefore, if you're on this path, left-hand path, and you're attacking the masculine, you are already admitting you're really not about this path. That you're still about different philosophies that you filtered into here or brought into here and found a way to push it forth, masking it under left-hand path philosophy. That's not left-hand path philosophy. Take it from a brother who's been walking this for over a decade and a half. This is not what left-hand path is about. There, Unfortunately, I hear too many people attacking the patriarchal. Oh, and it's everything was the matriarchal. Stop it. Those are human concepts that you're limiting yourself into a, and binding yourself into these human philosophies and concepts that have no potential for growth. None. You should be beyond these limiting concepts and philosophies when you're on the left-hand path, when you're on the adversarial path, the dark-hand path, you are surpassing these limitations that we put on ourselves or accept that others put on us. We accept it. They're putting it on us and we're accepting it. That's not what the left-hand path is about. This path is about power, seeking power. And the only way you become powerful is to master the union of the masculine and feminine. Too divided right now. There's too many people divided on this path because they've allowed ignorant teachers out there to spew forth their man hate and pass it off as true. Then the delusional mindset comes on and they'll try to push it further. Lilith gave me a message. She gave me a message. See, you, she gave you a message. This is where the, the delusions come in. So I'm sharing my message with all of y'all because some way, somehow I feel I'm a Messiah, a savior to the masses. So I have to tell you that she told me to tell you all that the patriarchal is what's defined her and created these concepts of her false. Stop with your subjective BS and trying to pass it off to others as if it's Right and exact. It's a subjective thing. It is your experience, no doubt. But it is just that, your experience. It cannot be verified by others. It's not validated by others. So therefore, it's your subjective experience. You're still passing it off as if it's the gospel truth. It's not When you really work with Lilith, Lilith is not concerned with matriarchal, patriarchal, conquering, opposing, oppression, 
What Lilith is concerned with is the individual becoming powerful within the self. Within the self. Now, I cannot deny that she may have shared that with you, but that's because that's what you needed. Your weaknesses, your weak mind, your fragile ego, your hurt butt is what needed to hear that because maybe that's what you need to feel better about yourself and feel that I'm fighting for all femininity. This is the problem that takes place right now. So then when a brother like myself comes along talking about masculinity, you go into the hissy fit of, oh, see, he's toxic. Why? Because I'm speaking about masculinity. True masculinity is not toxic. Men passing, us all, passing themselves off as being masculine is what's toxic. Not a true masculine. A true masculine is a protector by nature. Not only is he a protector by nature, he's also a provider by nature. Not only is he a provider by nature, he is conscious by nature, attached and connected to Shiva the destroyer, which is a part of the part of the trisho of the creator, the destroyer, and the preserver, Shiva represents that supreme consciousness. The female Kali Shakti is responsible for awakening, bringing the energy to awaken the masculine power, energy, attributes, and abilities within man, the male. That energy is necessary for the man to awaken to his true consciousness. But instead of working within to unite or outside of ourselves to unite, we attack the masculine within us, because when you attack masculinity outside of you, you're attacking it within you. And nowhere in the left-hand path, nowhere in the occult has there ever been a such a one-sided concept because the goal in all left-hand path is to learn the masculine and the feminine and mastering and merging it within. So where do we get these ideas from? Where we came from? How we walked over here into the left-hand path? And when we came over here, we brought those concepts here because we still were fragile. We still were hurt. We still were wounded. When you truly understand that, you would not attack the masculine or the feminine. You would never hear me attack the feminine because I understand the feminine within myself. I understand the feminine outside of myself because I understand it within me. I understand it outside of me. So what I do is support, motivate, and help bring forth that dark energy within the feminine, inside of myself and outside of myself, to reach their supreme potential. And in turn, that feminine activates my supreme consciousness to merge within self so we all can elevate to be those gods is it for everybody hell no will everybody raise up to be supreme gods hell no is it intended for everybody to wake up no as a vampire do you want everybody to wake up definitely not but that's a discussion for another day because some of y'all might get butt hurt by true understanding of the mindset of a vampire and feel like you're under attack or this is too rough and rugged for me. See, we are of a different mindset as vampires. We are of a different mindset as Sith. 
And we cannot be contained or confined or defined by your fragile minds, by your fragile society, by your fragile educational system, or anything else. As the Sith, we understand that. We understand the supremacy of our minds. We understand the supremacy of our energy. We understand the supremacy of how to use that to our power, to break the chains that bind us, to reach our full potential. If you don't look at yourself as a supreme being, you will never strive to reach the level of being supreme. You will always maintain the level of being a mortal individual and never an immortal mindset. So as a Sith, we do not allow ourselves to be defined or limited by fragile human minds. Fragile human concepts and fragile people. If you still feel like you need to attack one or the other, you are a fragile, hurt individual that has not found the time or the energy to go within to hurt, to heal the hurt within. You still butt hurt from the trauma you experienced, and that is understandable. But you can do something about it. That is up to you what you do, though. You can go forth or not. The good sister, the cosmic serpent, has classes that deal with healing the inner child. It's a shadow work. Great person to learn from, to help you, because she healed herself immensely the brother Beniti has a lot of good classes that deal with shadow work great classes your choice though you have to make a decision if you want to do that myself Demetrius we have the tunnels of set that within each journey or within each tunnel we do immense amount of shadow work We are waking up to our supreme potential every day because we put in the effort and the work. So too many people sit in the sidelines, your choice, not worried about it. That's your personal choice. You either get, you either catch up or be left behind. That's truly where every human being has to make their own decision. Get catch up, go ahead or be left behind. Unfortunately, too many people stay back there. They're left behind. Because they want to straddle the fence, sit in the sidelines, sit in the bleachers, and watch instead of participate. You got to participate some point in time. So these left-hand path, or with these thoughts and musing on the left-hand path, will be a series of live videos and video and just recorded videos as well for the purpose of reflection on some of these thoughts concepts philosophies and ideas that we need to go further involve ourselves further that's what these are about so hopefully we see you tonight on youtube live at 8 p.m Myself, Brother Demetrius, will be discussing more thoughts and musings on the left-hand path. Now, updates. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the class tonight. Secondly, I'm going to give this one last shot. One last shot. Patreon is open to all. But at some point in time, there comes a point where I just have to stop. Okay. What I mean by that is I'm going to give this one last shot where new individuals such as yourself can start in a new class at the very beginning of the left-hand path. 
this new class I created, this new tier on Patreon, is called Awakening the Sleep of uh, this. Sorry, Awakening the Sleeping Dragon. The Sleeping Dragon is a concept, a vampiric concept of the true self, the true ego. It is that aspect that we need to awaken within us. It is a shift in consciousness, a shift in energy, so on and so forth. That was created this morning. What that class will do is it will focus on the beginning concepts. We're going to use works of the chakras. We're going to get a left-hand path understanding of the chakras. We're going to learn how to exercise those chakras from the left-hand path concepts. We're going to do kundalini work from the left-hand path concept. Breathing techniques from the left-hand path concept. To awaken a sleeping dragon within. I'm taking it back to the beginning for the newbies and those individuals who have always been interested and really learned the left-hand path but felt that some of these classes were too advanced. So we're going to start there. We're going to start on the chakras. How do, what is the understanding of, what are your understandings of the chakra, of the chakras from a left-hand path perspective? What are the chakras? What are the hidden chakras? The secret chakras? How to activate them? There'll be exercises on how to activate each chakra from a left-hand path perspective. It's different than what you're going to learn in most, con in most, practices. From there, once we walk, work through the seven main chakras and then the hidden chakras, we're going to then begin concentrating on awakening the kundalini, kundalini exercises, how to activate it, the exercises, the breathing techniques, so on and so forth. We're going to focus a lot on breathing breathing techniques that are essential in awakening your chakra and kundalini. Your chakra's kundalinis a lot of times are activated by breath, mind, and different concepts like that. I mean, different practices like that. In that class, we're also going to deal a lot with the philosophy of what the sleeping dragon is. The true self, the demonic self, and how it is vital to our potential to reach our supreme state. If you are to join the class, have a journal. Have a journal because when you do chakra work, it's there's aspects that are very aligned with shadow work. Okay? When you open up certain chakras, traumas, pains, issues will come to the surface. When you do kundalini work, that also happens a lot. So have a, uh, have a journal, okay? Whatever chakra books you have, bring them to the table. I'll suggest some, but we're not really going to focus on these mainstream, fluffy occult chakra works. We're going on the dark side. But we're going to begin there. Even if you've been rolling with me for years, that's fine. If you want to get in the chakra class, do so. I mean, in the in the uh, sleeping, awakening the sleeping dragon. To me, I've always listen. I'm gonna be real with you. <clears throat> One of my nicknames in the past, before I came into the left hand path, people used to call me the chakra guru, because all I used to talk about, all I used to study, all I used to practice was chakra work, kundalini work, day and night. Before I even came here, I was a lot dealing a lot with the left hand path, Eastern left hand path, Tantra. I did a lot of work in Tantra, Vama, Vama Marga from the left hand path of India. Okay, Tantric. So they used to call me the chakra guru because that's all I did. I lived it, breathed it, sleep, and it's still there inside of me. I just learned it from a left-hand path perspective and have gone deeper into it, learned better techniques, so on and so forth. 
it's going to be a very thorough class. It's going to have you really master what chakras are and have less questions on chakras. Okay? And I'm doing this for a reason. Because sometimes we feel that we may not have a thorough understanding of chakras, kundalini, and things of that nature when we come to the left-hand path. If you've never dealt with it, then it's understandable. That is a foundation for the occult across all, all aspects of it, right? Middle, left-hand path, doesn't matter. You should have a foundational understanding of chakras, kundalini, breath work, meditation. We will do a lot of meditation in this as well. You will master meditation in this as well, in this class as well. So this is for everybody out there. Hopefully people get down, they join, they learn, and we grow and you move on to the other classes if that's your choice. But the very least, you will get a foundational understanding of how chakras, kundalini, breath work, and meditation is used on the left-hand path, which will only make your work stronger. Okay? So this is it. After this class, I'm not creating any more classes. I'm not opening... Any more classes, what is there is what is there. Whoever's there, that's fine. I got to keep moving past, you know, hoping new people get in or wanting. I don't care about that no more. It is what it is. What it is. You in it, you in it, you're not, you're not. I concentrate on who's there and we're growing. And they can attest to that. We're growing by leaps and bounds. Okay. Some of this chakra kundalini meditation work, I will also start teaching in the Sith Temple of Darkness. And that's going to be a doozy woozy for those just get ready on that side. All right. But anyways, it's good to see some of y'all with these uh, live classes that we'll be having and have had. Hopefully I see y'all tonight, 8 p.m. Infernal greetings, infernal blessings.